Welcome to the St. John Methodist Church. You are about to have a divine encounter with the Lord as you receive this word, proudly brought to us by very Reverend John K. Adu Jr. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time, our gracious Father is good. Uh, it's always a joy to gather around his word, the word of life. It's always a joy to get opportunity to delve deep into the Word. For the Bible tells us clearly that it was the whole creation has something to do with the Word. And so then, whenever you get the opportunity to come to the Word, you are receiving the capacity to create. Hallelujah. You are receiving the ability to bring to pass new things because God's Word brought forth the creation. And so if that seed is in you, you never know what you can do with this. And so anytime we gather around the gospel, the word of God, we must come with joy and receive gladly what the Lord has for us. It's my prayer that you will open up for God to speak to me and to you, for us to learn new things for our lives and for our, for our making as God's children in this world. Shall we share a word of prayer? Father, we want to thank you this morning for the joy and the strength that we receive from your word. We ask that your word will come to us in its fullness and glory, clearing from our hearts and minds all kinds of confusion and Lord, going through any inhibition to settle in our heart and then weaving itself within our nature such that we'll be transformed to reflect the word. Precious Father, we ask that you release your unction to your speaker and to the hearers. May the proclamation and the receiving of your word be under the influence of your spirit. And may all who hear today, Father, be instructed in the way of goodness. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. This morning we have a very interesting subject to look at. Anointed for service. Anointed for service. Shall we say that together? One of the interesting prayer topics that we love praying almost every day, God, anoint me. Father, pour the oil. That he pour the oil. I need the anointing. I need the anointing. I need the oil. Lord, anoint me. Lord, anoint me. To break yokes. Anoint me. Let the burdens be lifted. Anoint me so that Wherever I stand, people will know that I'm an anointed man, I'm an anointed woman, I'm an anointed child. That is good. But today's topic suggests to us that the anointing is for a purpose. The anointing is for a purpose. They are the ones that you receive to break use. And they are ones that you receive for service. And to do our focus... It's that anointing that the Lord God himself, Jesus the Christ, received and connected that to service. Can you humbly turn your scriptures with me to Isaiah chapter 61? Open a Bible. Open a Bible. It's part of your Christian discipline to open a Bible. So I want you to open a Bible. Don't read the projector. And humbly put your Bible on your lap. And let's go through as a studious child of God. Open your Bible. And put your Bible on your lap as a good child of God who wants to learn from the Father. And you are not worshipping God with a projector. You are worshipping God with your hearts and his word. Are we all there? You have your Bibles opened? God bless you. 
Now we are in Isaiah chapter 61. The Bible says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me. To do what? You mark it in your word. First know that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me. First to bring good news to the poor. Number two, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. The anointing is supposed to do that. And to proclaim liberty to the captives. Number three. Number four, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Number five, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And number six, that the day of vengeance of our God. And finally, number seven, to comfort all who mourn. Jesus reveals to us that the anointing of God upon his life, the oil of God on his head, was to accomplish these. And these are the services he came to render unto humanity. Let's broadly try to understand anointing. I'm sure we have talked about anointing over and over in this church. But for our purpose this morning, anointing is broadly understood as the release of God's spirit upon a person which sets him or her apart for divine use and divine purposes. Anointing broadly is the release of God's spirit upon a believer, the child of God, the servant of God, the born again Christian, the person who confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior is the release of the spirit on him or her. That puts him directly for a particular course of action in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom business. The presence of the Holy Spirit upon this individual who is set apart for divine purposes and divine assignments opens him or her up to extraordinary power and endowment to accomplish the extraordinary. The oil of God that comes upon the person, the spirit of God that comes upon the believer, when he sets the person apart, it is like a door opening, an opportunity, uh, a kind of avenue that is created for this individual to tap into the power of God, to tap into the endowment of the living God and draw from such capacity that ability of God to do things usually uncommon amongst the people. And so therefore, anyone who has this oil, the anointing, the spirit of God of him or her often makes a difference in whatsoever endeavor he or she is involved in. Even if it is sweeping, that person sweeps with a difference. Because the oil picks him up to a certain empowerment, which the ordinary people do not have. Normally, the outpouring of oil and the laying of hands have been the physical means by which God envelops his people with his spirit. Usually when people are going to receive the oil, the Holy Ghost, the God coming upon the person, they, it normally comes after your prayers, after you've waited upon God. Uh, if the Holy Ghost does not come directly to you, oftentimes the laying off on, of hands, if a man of God who is anointed by God lays his hand upon you, you can receive the anointing of God. Or if the oil, that oil, the normal oil, the olive oil, uh, whatever oil that can be that is poured upon you, uh, God releases a spirit. These physical signs or gestures, God has chosen as a means by which He releases a spirit into His people. And so, then, anyone who really wants to do the work of God must do these three things. First, pray 
for the oil of God. Pray for the Spirit of God to come upon him or upon her. Or, I mean, a man of God, a seasoned man of God, in a prayer meeting can lay hands or an oil can be poured. When these are done, the Holy Ghost come upon the people. And the Bible says clearly to us, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, that the servant of God, David, King David, the Holy Ghost came upon him when the oil of God was poured on him by Samuel, the priest, the judge, and the prophet. When the oil was poured upon him, the Holy Ghost came upon him. The power of the Lord came upon him. Jesus himself had declared to us that the Spirit of God is upon me. And that Spirit of God has come as a result of the anointing of God upon my head. The oil upon me. You can also remember that before the disciples went into doing any ministry, any work of service, any action under the sun, the Lord himself told them in Luke chapter 24 verse 49 that do not move anywhere. Wait until you have received the promise of the Father. The promised Holy Spirit and comes upon you, you will receive power. For before ministry is done, before service is done, in accordance with the will and the purpose of God, for God's kingdom and for you as an individual, there must be a tapping into the anointing of God. There must be a tapping into the oil of the living God. And so then, Jesus asked them to wait for the oil. And when he came to earth, he actually confirmed it in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power to be my witnesses. And in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 14, they then had a personal experience. Individual, they had personal experience of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that he came upon them like, like tongues of fire. And they began to speak in tongues, languages strange to other people. But it, it was intelligible to the people who were listening. That kind of tongues is called xenoglossia. There are about four different kinds of tongues that we speak uh, another time. <laughs> Hallelujah. The people could hear exactly what was being declared in their own languages. And since that time, the ministry of these disciples changed. It was for a purpose that the Lord asked them to wait for the Holy Ghost before they launch out into ministry. You remember our own father, John Wesley? He had done ministry, trying to preach, trying to say the scriptures, trying to do all kinds of things. But not until... May 24, on Addisgate Street, when he had that personal encounter, some theologians will say uh, assurance of salvation, others will say the Holy Ghost in feeling, the Holy Ghost in partition, whatsoever it is, I care less. What I know is that he had an encounter. And that encounter from that day changed John Wesley's ministry. After that encounter, today we talk about John Wesley because he had that experience. You know why? In this church tomorrow, if you are not here, nobody will remember you. Because you lack anointing. Yes, because you lack anointing. Your influence is limited. Your impact is weak. Because you like the oil. You are trying to do something for God. We are all trying to run around, jumping up and down, shouting, trying to do something for the Lord. But the oil to make what we do impacts and influence, we lack. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, Jesus tells you and I, as his own children, in Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8, verse 19, First Thessalonians 5, 19, that we should not quench the Holy Ghost. 
use the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God for ministry is critical if you quench the Holy Ghost upon your life or you shut out the Spirit of God from your life, you cannot serve God the way God wants you to serve. Even in giving, there is no better giving than the one that you have prayed and the Holy Ghost has told you, take this particular seed to me or take this particular money to this person or take this particular thing to this particular person. I tell you, there is no giving greater than the one instructed by the Holy Ghost. It is for this reason that the Bible says that in all that you want to shut out of your life, do not shut out the Holy Ghost. For you do that at your own peril. You do that at the disadvantage of your own faith to walk with God. If the Holy Ghost is quenched in your life, you are doomed. Your Christian life becomes very mechanical. Your Christian life becomes so, so, so normal. It's like a cold food. Anytime the food is cold, houseflies become their best friends. But anytime the food is hot, even the dogs are afraid. Let alone a housefly. When the Holy Spirit is quenched out of your life, or you resist the Spirit from operating in you and from using you for God's purpose and God's agenda, you become like a cold food. Any cough of a demon releases cold upon your life. Any snap of the finger of the enemy is able to lift you and place you where you do not want to be. But when the oil of God is fresh upon your head, hallelujah, when the anointing of God is still fresh upon your head, when the Holy Ghost is still at work in your life, let the enemy box you and you will not move. For the Bible says that the Lord himself surrounds you like Mount Zion uh, that surrounds Jerusalem that can never be moved. You become deep, firm, and heavy. Nothing can push you. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, this oil that the Lord releases upon our lives, clearly, is for service and service as we know uh basically the one that we it's very very common to us is from that greek word diconia and diconia means service seven of table and then you derive the the whole general knowledge of service but in reading the greek new testament there is a word that runs through diconia is very limited in the use of the greek new testament but the word doulos, which means slave, duleo, I mean slave, servant, duleo is that word that, that permeates uh, the, the uh, what do you call it, the subtwagent through the New Testament. The duleo uh, talks about a relationship, a service born out of relationship between a doulos and curios. Curious is Lord, and Dulos is a slave, a servant. And the kind of service mentioned with Duleo is more of a, mas a servant serving a master. And so throughout the Greek New Testament and the Septuagint, this word suggests that the Christian service, the believer's service, is more of a person who is a servant to a curious, a lord, and, and doing things with the mind that the one I'm serving is higher than myself. It is significant because anytime you are serving a higher person, you serve with a difference. And anytime you are serving somebody who you believe is at your level or is lower than you, you also know how you do it. For example, the way you serve daddy is definitely different from the way you serve <laughs> with a small voice. It's definitely different. The way you will serve us of pain, it says, I am visiting you today in your house. And the way you will serve the youth chairman, but there will be what? There will be a difference. 
And so that mentality is critical. The relationship between the servants and the Lord as revealed in the Bible to us must permeate into our Christian service such that all you do every day in the house of the Lord and in the nation that the Lord has planted you must be done with the mind that I am serving someone who is superior and greater and as such deserves the best from me nothing but the best let me say that in quote forgive me the most lazy the, the most lazy MD, MD, uh, MCE or DCE or whatever the day he or, he, he or she hears that the president is visiting his or her district, that day he will make sure that all the potholes are filled on this road. Because he knows that if he doesn't do that, his job is on the line. It tells you that a superior carries a certain understanding. And the Christian service is just not an ordinary service. It's a service rendered to a master rendered unto the lord rendered unto the king of kings brothers and sisters in the lord let me quickly 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 tell you that the lord jesus christ himself in mark chapter 10 verse 4 45 of what it says stated clearly unto us that the son of man came into this world not to be saved by anybody but to save and to render his own life as a ransom to many and the rendering of his own life comes as a, a service to the one who sent him to come and die though it is a it was painful though it was troubling for him to die but he couldn't do otherwise as he told the father oh i wish you take this cup from me but not my will yours be done that is how you we save a master sometimes mommy sends you daddy sends you scratching your head you you are you are so tired you do you don't want to go but because daddy says go your face will be squeezed as if rains are coming yet you will go anyway anyhow because it is a superior who has sent you to go with that understanding you would know that you need to understand the kind of services you are rendering unto the lord one of them i have noted is your church attendance service any to church you tell people i am going to worship service attending church is part of your service coming to praise him coming to worship him coming to give your offering coming to relate to him as a kind of service and so then if it's a kind of service that you are rendering to god then you must know that you cannot do it anyway anyhow can you take the scripture for me and please if the bible is yours kindly mark it jeremiah 48 verse 10 can we all read that scripture together from our bibles not the projector please from our bibles read from your bible please we are reading from our bible if you don't have a bible the lord has taken note of you that you are ashamed of carrying the bible you are ashamed okay so shall we all read together curse is he who does the work of the lord with slackness and curse is he who keeps back his sword from bloodshed. Curse is the one who does the work of God anyway, anyhow. And so, for example, you are supposed to come to church Sunday morning. And of all the things you do in the, 20, the 24 hours God has given you in a day, and the seven days that the Lord has given you, the only place you decide to go within your leisure is coming to worship. But all others, you wake up at 4 a.m. 
and get yourself at the place before 7 30 because a certain human being will give you a query and you think that when you come to the presence of god after 7 45 after 8 and declare i'm coming to first service the lord will clap for you you will have a higher query or you will have a higher query to answer a bigger one to answer if all the things you would do coming to worship the lord of laws the creator of the universe, of all things visible and invisible you will do with your own way the bible is saying that cares be that individual who lacks in doing the work of god who does the work of god anyhow spiritual truth are truth and so sometimes you are thinking that i am being blessed i'm being blessed because i have done that i've gone to church given my offering i've given my time because you did it anyhow you did not attract blessings in serving god in your tithe you pay your tithe anyhow put in something if i don't put in something they will talk so not in commensuration with my own money that the lord has blessed with bless me with i give anything to represent anything you come to church at the time to represent yourself so that Osofu doesn't worry you why you didn't come to church. Church attendance, anyhow. Titan, anyhow. Evangelism, anyhow. Loving others, anyhow. What will come upon your life? What will come upon your life? Because the word of God says that cares be that individual who does the work of God anyhow yet you are always quick god anoint me 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 a church of almost a thousand people you come to friday prayer meetings and it's like the people here all of us are busy yet we are able to create time to attend at least four or five business activities in terms of engagement weddings parties saturday we are able to create time for everything that young lady when that young lady gave you a date papa baby baby you look at your stomach that that small girl is calling you baby you see baby baby when that girl said baby 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 can we can we meet at la palm look at how you gathered your things and quickly by 4 30 you told everybody in your office i have an appointment somewhere wait 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 and you went then when to friday prayer meeting also because you also for, you know traffic also for, i am tired so curse be the one who does the work of god anyhow when it comes to other things we have time but when it comes to the lord we do it anyhow god is not happy and god is never pleased with such people for he will not waste his oil he will never waste his anointing he will not waste his son coming to die he will not waste it it's for purpose and those who seek it must get it and use it for his glory church it's time that we will rise up to our responsibility tell somebody for me it's time for us to rise up to the things that the Lord has spared of us. Dear Christian friends, I wish to conclude, but I have much to say, so because of time. Take note of this. In your serving God, having received your anointing, you must do it faithfully and wholeheartedly in the fear of the Lord. Second Chronicles 19, 9. In your service of God, be in the church, outside the church, in the country, in your office, in your family, whatever service you have been given to do, whatever work you've been given to do, is a service unto God. And the instruction of God is that do it faithfully. Do it what? Faithfully. Truthfully do it wholeheartedly and do it in the fear of the lord that whatsoever you are doing you have an account to give to god who gave you the talent the skill and the gifts and above all the anointing to do it faithfully wholeheartedly and in the fear 
of God. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, listen to what John Wesley said about service. John Wesley said, one of the principal rules of religion is to lose no occasion of serving God. And since he is invisible to our eyes, we are to serve him in our neighbor, which he receives as if done to himself in person, standing visibly before us. What John Wesley is trying to say is that never, one of the things you shouldn't ever lose in this world is opportunity to do something for God. And because you cannot see God physically, whatsoever you want to do, do it for that individual, that person in the church, that person in prison, that person in the hospital, that person in your office. And when you do that, the Lord sees that action as done unto him. And he will bless you accordingly. Kindly take your notepad and write these principles I'm going to dish out to you, brother, sister in the Lord. Having received anointing and uh, having received enlist enlistment from God into his kingdom, into his army to save, take note that number one your service must make a difference your service must make a difference number two you will not always serve in the contest you like but you will serve in the contest the lord needs you time is not on my side so i'm just making a list number three your service must be characterized by these five important things conviction conviction commitment passion consistency and anointing conviction commitment passion consistency and anointing number four your service must be selfless your service must be selfless number five your service must be result oriented results oriented Jesus came and he secured salvation for us. Number six. The goal of your service must always be to glorify God. The goal of your service must always be to glorify God. Number seven. Your service is best appreciated when done in humility done in arrogance your service is best appreciated when done in humility done in arrogance may i humbly conclude child of god with a quote from a certain man called e.m foster e.m foster says one person with passion is better than 40 people with mere interest. One person with passion is better than 40 people with mere interest. Child of God, may I humbly say that in serving our God, we must do that with that deep conviction that firm belief that commitment that loyalty that devotion we must do that with that intense emotion and willingness to die for what god has assigned to us we must do that continuously we must do that consistently and we should never serve without the oil of god 
the oil must always be on our head. I conclude with a statement my wife once made to me. I said, Osofo, do you know why your Methodist church is not doing too well? And I said, why? It says, the Methodist church functions like a public school. And the charismatic churches function like a private school. I said, why? The Methodist church lacks passion in what you do. The charismatic churches have passion in what they do. And with that passion, they are able to despise themselves. This morning, if there's one thing I want to leave with you, is that serve your God with this anointing in great passion. And you make a difference you will never imagine. May God grant us grace to serve him even in our time. Amen. God bless you for listening to this message. It was brought to you by the St. John Methodist Church. We are located at Tantra Hills near Champion Divine Clinic. For more information on our weekly activities, Sunday services, events, or to listen to other messages, kindly visit our website at www.sjmcth.com. For more information, kindly mail us at info at sjmcth.com. God bless.